Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and today we're going to do some unboxing of all of this and show you what we got in our latest art haul. So let's get started. Alright, I have this new art haul that I want to share with you, and I got some things from the St. Louis Art Supply Company that I'm super excited about, and then some other random things that I've ordered that I just thought I would share. And since I like watching art haul videos so much, and seeing what other people find out there that I might not have known about, or got their opinion on, I thought I'd just do these every time I got a little stash of supplies in. So I'm super excited! So I just pulled it out of the box. I haven't actually got into it yet but what I ordered from the St. Louis art supply that I'm super excited about is this whole bean artist gouache colors so this is traditional colors of Japan and this is the spring collection these looked so beautiful online look at this I'll, I'll be honest these two colors right here this kind of peachy pink and this ochre that is what made me order this box of colors because I'm like oh I love those so I think I'll like this set and if I only like those two then well that's okay um, but what's cool about a gouache and I don't use it as much as I do acrylic paints and watercolors but what I like about them is it's kind of a mix in between a watercolor and a gouache Gouache. These are watercolor gouaches. There are acrylic gouaches also, but these are the watercolor ones. So they have like the same binder as like a watercolor, but they're more heavily pigmented and they are very matte in the way that they dry and they, they look. So I'm actually really excited to play in this color set and experiment with the gouache because I like the watercolor and I like the acrylic and I definitely think these are going to be fun to play in. And also got a Sennelier 100% uh, pure cotton uh, watercolor pad, cold press, um, because this is uh, four and a quarter by nine and two thirds. So a little over four by nine. And I just liked the shape. And you know, I like to do those yummy kind of landscapey looking kind of paintings. So I thought this would be like the perfect thing for those. And I'm gonna pull out um, one of the paintings that we did with the Peerless watercolors because this will be relevant in the supply box that I've got beside me. But I like these kind of misty, landscapey looking, tall kind of orientations. And I thought Ooh, that would be fun to kind of experiment with on this watercolor pad. So I'm kind of excited to get to experiment with that. I love that they send us a little ruler. All right, so I'm gonna move this packaging out of the way. And I have a yummy box here of delicious goodies. Um, I ordered from Peerless Watercolors some of the watercolors that I liked. And I ordered them in the three colors that we did in this Peerless Water tutorial. And I loved them. It's this yummy pinky color, this yummy kind of turquoise color, and the yellow ochre kind of color. So I've got the chrome yellow, the rose red, and the mountain green because I loved them so much that I thought, wouldn't these be fun to do in like a drip water color or something where I'm dripping color in and letting it run kind of like I do the inks? And I just thought I wanted to experiment with that. And what I love about these are only $9, which for a watercolor, if you buy, you know, a Daniel Smith you know, tube of watercolor, those could go anywhere from probably $9 to $29. So I thought nine bucks wasn't bad at all. So these are liquid watercolors in the three colors that I wanted. So if you like those peerless watercolors, but you're not so sure about painting, you know, off that paper, you can order these. I didn't even know that, but I was like looking around on their website and I'm like, oh yeah, we need that. And then they send you a yummy gift. So I thought that was super fun. Um, and this is a deep, blue that they sent me so I thought oh nice and it's these pretty colors that I ordered so I'm kind of excited to use those I also got in if you know my obsession with graphite watercolors I mean obsessed with them this is my favorite the Kuretake graphite colors are my favorite and then I've made tons and tons of my own colors well they're went makes a graphite watercolor paint pan set and I thought how super cool is that I didn't even know it's because I don't know it might have come out after I had the others and Derwent saw the Kuretakis and they were like what is this we need to make that too so I actually love 
this fun little set and it comes with its own little watercolor pen so super fun so you could use it as like a travel set that'd be convenient um, but I thought that would be fun to try out so if you like the graphite watercolors Derwent makes one now and it has a lot of shades whereas the Kuretake only has like those six colors um, this one has 12 colors and look at all of them they're really pretty a nice range of shades there from red orange uh, or like a yellowy shade, green, gray, blue, green, so all kinds of good stuff. So I thought that would be super fun to play in. And I got a couple of these Kindy Papers sketchbooks. And these are um, handmade in India and they are sized um, papers. But I thought sketchbook wise it was such a yummy size and I saw an artist using Condi papers and I thought ooh, I might like to try those and I thought these little sketchbooks were like the perfect way to dip my toe into um, a paper I've never used and I like that it's handmade paper on the cover too so you can really decorate the whole thing so I ordered a couple of those 100% handmade paper acid free 100% um, South India recycled cotton. So it's 100% cotton. It's already sized and they're really beautiful size. And this is, what size is this? This is six by six, um, just to give you an idea there on that size. And then I got some more Posca pins. You know, I love Posca pins. And when I was looking for some more white ones because I like the white extra fine tip, which I believe I've got a couple of those. Yes, I do. I like the white extra fine tip. It's my very favorite tip to do dots and stuff with for the size art that I love to do. Um, but I like other colors too. And look at these colors. I love that it's kind of some yummy pretty neutrals. Those kind of look right in my color palette. I like the cream. I kind of like this burgundy and pink. I like the brown. Um, so those are going to be fun to play in. I don't think the tip is as small as my favorite tip. Oh, it is a little, it's a nice small tip. Ho, ho, ho! I'm definitely going to love those. The other Posca pen set that I got, the tip is way bigger. I haven't even used all these colors, but look at that big fat tip. Um, so, I like that these are a much finer tip. And I love these colors that that is. And I'm going to link all this stuff under the video for you for everything I can find a link for. Um, but this is a set of eight, and I don't see a name on it, but it's a Posca coloring set. And I'll just link the one I bought, but I love that set of colors for Posca pens. Also, got some new stencils. Ha ha ha. So I like these stencils that are the Crafters uh, Workshop stencils. Um, and this one looked super fun. I like things that look a little worn. Maybe they've got um, the little dots like my um, Punchinella that I love so much. And this one looks nice and worn and yummy. And I think I'm going to love that a lot. This is the mini sketch grid, uh, grid TCW456S. So I think I'm going to enjoy playing with that. I also got a couple of stencils that look like Punchinella, just so that you can see you can get Punchinella if you don't want to buy like a ribbon roll of this stuff. You can get Punchinella in some of these stamps that are available online. So these are the Tim Holtz ones, and this one's more like the halftone circle, but I love halftone circles, so I think that'll be super super cool to use in something and this one's called half tone layered so it's one of the half layered series and then I got another set of layering stencils here let me cut these out of this package because I don't know can you ever have enough stencils I don't know <laughs> but I really loved that these had some yummy smaller patterns because some of the stencils have really big patterns and I like to work on uh, kind of small to medium pieces a lot of times here at my table so that's going to be perfect. This one is the burlap layering stencil THS007 and then this one is a little bit like Punchinella but not as perfect and I thought oh that is perfect <laughs> and this is um 
THS002 bubble layering stencil. How amazing are these gonna be in some of our work? I can't wait to use those. Oh my gosh, had to do a little refill on my Kurataki Gold Mica ink. I'm not sure that you could ever have enough ink. I might just be one of those little old ladies that you're going to come to my house one day and you're going to see that I'm the ink hoarder and I'm going to have shelves lining my art room of all the ink. <laughs> and, ooh, a brand new Higgins uh, India ink in black because I love it for making marks and things. And... These are my favorite sponges to cut up into quarters for my stencil work. So I have uh, used a lot of these and sometimes you'll forget to dry to wash the paint out. But this is basically what these little round sponges are um, that I love to use so much. So I thought new pack of sponges. So I'm just going to cut those into quarters. That's what I use for stenciling. And that is everything in the box. I actually got two of those. And another thing of my granulation medium because this is the most awesome stuff. And I've already used like three quarters of the bottle that I got at my birthday. <laughs> Super fun. So what I want to do is maybe just open some of this up and make a little tester, a little sampler, some kind of cute little piece of artwork and just test out some of the stuff that we got today. So I'll be right back. All right, I've put out some of our gouache. I'm dying to try the gouache, and I'm just using that Sennelier pad that I bought because um, I would like to kind of show you how to get something off a pad once you paint something on it. But what if we use our bamboo brush, because you know I love the bamboo brush, and make one of our yummy landscapey things and just see how's this going to work. All right, so it's definitely taking more water. Oh, there we go. I was being scurred. <laughs> Don't be scurred. <laughs> Just jump right in there. All right, let's try this yummy yellow. I just put out the light ochre and pale coral just to see. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. kind of what I wanted. Okay, now I'm kind of doubting the next choice, but came with some silver in it. This came with two grays, and it came with antique silver and silver gray. The silver gray is just like a gray, and the antique silver is metallic. Ha-ha! <laughs> How fun is that? And I kind of want a metallic in here, but do I? Do I want a metallic in there? I mean, I'm almost... Like, maybe we should test it on a little tiny piece of paper to make sure, because I'm right there with you on, I don't want to make a mistake sometimes, and uh, I'm just like, oh, was that the right color choice? Let's just put some of these colors on here and look. All right, let's, let's do the silver and see. Oh, yeah, see, the silver's kind of light. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, now I know. Now I know. Good choice. Okay, let's do the silver. <laughs> And we could mix the silver with a color. I'm sure that would work out too. But I didn't want to just totally ruin the lovely yumminess I'm creating. I'm right there with you. I get a little scared. <laughs> but you know what? Be brave. Be brave. Oh, look how pretty that is. Like really pretty. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, just scrubbing this little <laughs> Windsor Newton bamboo brush around just makes me so happy. I almost never want to paint with another watercolor brush that's a normal brush again. Oh, look how pretty this is. All right, maybe maybe a little more. I don't know. Do we love it like it is? I think we do. You know, I need like a vote button. I had somebody sell me on one of my videos. They were going, no, to the video as I was painting and I got all tickled because <laughs> sometimes I do that to people too. I'm like, don't do that. It's kind of like telling the person going into the house that, you know, they're about to be murdered and you're like, don't go in there, dumb lady. <laughs> It's like, don't do that. Somebody else was like, don't cut that up afterwards. And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't cut it up. But they were like, what? they were afraid I was cutting things up. I shouldn't have cut up. <laughs> All right, that's super cool. I'm digging that right there. It has given me a yummy watercolor feel and look. 
It's very heavily pigmented. <gasps> oh, you know what? Let's test this out. Let's test this out. <laughs> we could granulate it with water and we can granulate it with the granulation medium just to see what it does since that came in our package today. And I'm going to put it in a pipette because I don't want to pour that out right now. And I'm going to use this kind of just to dip along and just see you know, what we can create. And you got to do this before this has a chance to dry. You don't necessarily want to do it while it's sopping wet, but it needs to be like damp and ready to kind of do its thing. If it's dry, it might reactivate, but it's just not going to be quite the same as if it were damp and we could kind of push this in for some texture and granulation. But I think it's kind of fun to test it on a product that's, you know, not granulating like a watercolor. Let's do that. So a little bit of texture going in there. <laughs> that's that Winsor Newton granulation medium, which is like my new favorite art supply. I didn't even know this existed until my friend's like, do you have this? Got it for your birthday. And I'm like, no, I do not. Oh, you know your friends love you and they'll bring you random art supplies. Okay, so we're going to have to let this dry and then I feel some mark making in my future, so I'll be right back. All right, I've let this dry and I will admit I used a heat gun since I'm filming, but the longer you let that dry naturally, the more variation and separation that you'll get rather than blending colors in way too much. But because I'm going to stencil on top of it, I'm going to forego doing another layer on these and play in my stencils for a moment. And this is that Crafters Workshop mini sketch grid one that we got. And I want to try doing some stenciling with the gouache. I might go back to acrylic paint, but I'm kind of thinking, what would the gouache do? Would it work the same way? Um, it's time to just get out our little experimenting hats and test it out because maybe, maybe I want this. Oh, <gasps> look at that. Oh my goodness, that, 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 that. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. That is a way we can get another dimension or element in our piece. Oh my gosh, that was exactly what I wanted. And I'm putting that on with a dry sponge and I feel like I need more paint. So let's be very careful there. Um, so dry paint, don't water this down, dry sponge. And that's how we get the best stencil out of it. Sometimes I dab it and sometimes I rub it, just depends on what you feel good about. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, that looks so good. Holy moly. And then a lot of times I don't clean my stencils off, but I might just kind of rub that paint in a little bit just to kind of keep them a little bit cleaner. Um, and you could too, you could like go set these in a tub of water if you wanted to keep them clean and then you could wash it off pretty easy. But I don't usually bother doing that. What if we tried this half tone in the yellow? <laughs> And these are halftone layered by the Tim Holtz. And I've got a smaller one that kind of gives these halftones that you've probably seen me use in other videos. And I absolutely love it. So what I love about this is it's a size larger. And so let's put out some more of this. Oh no, that's the wrong yellow. Don't do that. <laughs> that's too bright. Oh, uh, what was that? I don't I don't want that one. Let's see. That is Japonica yellow. All right, not that one. Let's come down here. And you know what we can do on top of this? We could do some gold. <laughs> all right, all right. Half tones, here we come. All right, let's let's just get brave and do it. And I I don't want it to go like edge to edge on the stencils. I want it to look a little more organic. And so that's why you see me kind of wander around the stencil. Sometimes when I'm doing stencil work, it doesn't have to be all perfect and all in the same area. <gasps> Look how good that looks. Oh my goodness, that is doing it. Ah, oh, see, so even though I didn't come back with another layer of watercolor to give it the dimension, these stencils are totally giving it the right dimension. Exactly what I wanted. Let's put this on here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now, I know you know what's coming now. Gold. And I, because I got one that's already open, I'm not going to open the new one yet. But because I bought the gold, let's use the gold on here. And 
yes, even though I know I've got a full one, I was like, I don't want to run out. <laughs> like, how am I going to run out of that this year? Probably not, but I'm like, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a nut. All right, so what do we want to do on here? We can do circles. We could do some kind of fake writing. I do like the I do like the writing. Um, let me just get this started. There we go. I like having a little scratch piece, but maybe I want some writing down here. And I'm just using that yummy Kakamori brass nib, which by the way, somebody told me um, every time I mention this nib in one of these videos, you know, people go looking for it because it's like the best nib on the planet. Um, and they're sold out of the brass a lot of times, but there is a stainless version of this exact nib on that St. Louis art supply. So I believe that's where that came from. And the stainless nib is perfect too. Don't feel like, oh, I can't get the brass one. The stainless one is just as good. I think the reason I got the brass when I first got it was because of my my love of this gold ink and it was gold and so I think I just went like gaga for gold <laughs> look at that oh my goodness and I love that it shimmers and I love that this is a nice long unusual shape kind of goes up and then we can also do let's do some dots oh yeah I feel like a dot girl today maybe some gold dots all right, that's super fun right there. Don't forget to wash your nib out. If you've got the nib, every time you use it, you don't want the ink to get stuck up in all those little crevices. And then, let's just check it out, all the fun stuff that we did. Check it out. Okay, so I know I got lots of other supplies that we didn't test today, but I guarantee you, you're gonna see those in future videos as I get each one of these to play in. And I cannot wait to see what these yummy, I should have got those Posca pens out, but that's okay. And I can't wait to play in this yummy Condi Papers sketchbook and these yummy stencils that we didn't play in and these graphite paints in different shades than I already have and these peerless liquid watercolors. You're going to definitely be seeing some of this stuff come up. So I hope you enjoyed this art haul. Yes, I know I have a little art supply addiction. I did mean to show you a fun trick in case you don't know how to get your water paper, watercolor paper off of a block like this really easily. Um, usually it has like an open section either like on this this one's kind of in the middle but sometimes it's on the end and you need a palette knife and you can just kind of dip this palette knife right in the side and just cut it right along the edge with that palette knife um, or if you've got an exacto knife that'd be good too but I happen to have a palette knife over here hanging up and voila gets it right off your pad without doing a lot of damage um, so i hope that was helpful hope you loved everything that i showed you today and i'll see you the next time i get an art haul